I'm repulsed. Oh. Looked like a river of blood. I see them with this head. I see uh. them throwing it around. Welcome back to the American Medium. In today's episode, Rhonda and I travel to one of Ireland's most haunted locations, Ockram Battlefield, scene to the bloodiest battle ever fought on Irish soil. Between five and 7,000 people lost their lives here in July 1691. The battle was fought between the largely Irish Jacobite army loyal to King James II and the forces of William III. I wondered how a psychic medium would fare in a location with such a brutal history. Let's find out what the American medium senses in Ockram Battlefield. Let's do this. Follow me. This might be the first time I've ever carried a cup of coffee. <laughs> I love it. I think I'm gonna need it. Like right now, this is a park though, right? This isn't really. Yeah, well, the we're, battle we're... was all over this area. We will be going to the battlefield, but okay. I'm just bringing you to the park first to see what you pick up. Well, on. I mean, there's so much going on right now. So there's there's a gentleman here with me now. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I fell don't off be the tripping! Point. Don't be tripping! <laughs> Oddly enough, last night before I was going to sleep, I mm -hmm. had quite a few men in my room. <laughs> oh, hello, a few soldier boys. <laughs> yeah, a few soldier boys. And I think that their spirits, their energies were just really eager to uh, have me come. They had a story to tell. I keep hearing that they're fighting for a birthright of a true king is what I keep hearing. Okay. Um, that and makes sense. Uh, there is a gentleman here with me now. Um, his name, he says, Jonathan O'Shaughnessy is what he says. Okay. And um, he says, just O'Shaughnessy is fine. He, he said it didn't have to happen like this. It wasn't supposed to happen like this. Um, he said we weren't supposed to lose. We were, we were supposed to win. It was supposed to be a sure thing. Okay. <clears throat> and I'm asking him, what are you talking about? And he said that there's a rightful king and there's an imposter. And um, they put all of their forces together in a smaller kind of zealot army that, um, okay, so I don't know time frames. I don't know years of these things that are happening, but I keep okay. hearing Jacobite. Jacobite. Oh, Jacobite. Okay. Jacobite. Uh, I say Jacobite, you say Jacobite. It's spelled Jacobite. Tomato, I tomato. Think, I think so. <laughs> um, but I, I hear, I say Jacobite, but... Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you could be right. It the, is the, me. Oh, well, no, I think it's just different <laughs> regions. We're from different reason, regions. And here's the thing that is so crazy to me that doesn't make sense, I guess, because I, it shouldn't, that it, it shouldn't make sense or not make sense because I don't know enough of the, of what's going on here mm. right now. I'm just telling you what I'm seeing. And I actually see men with him wearing kilts. kilts. So okay. I know that right now I'm communicating with Irish men and I'm communicating there are Scottish men being represented here and they're all kind of standing like this. They're, they're at a stance kind of mm -hmm. ready for action. They have so much heart. They have so much soul. They have so much passion and drive. It's like, we don't have a choice. We have to win this, but now they're telling me they lost. And okay. what he's telling me is that someone let them down. Okay. Somebody let them down. And apparently they were supposed to have support. It wasn't just supposed to. I said, well, who are you fighting against? And he said um, they were fighting against England. They had their king they wanted to put on. But he said we had the true king. Okay. And um, the true king who they've been protecting. 
And they said, he's the one that needed to be on the throne. And they said, the right will win, but the right didn't win. And uh, they're trying to pull in forces. They had a relationship with France, I believe. Okay. And I think they were supposed to get like a group of soldiers. Oh my God, and I'm actually, I got goosebumps, Derek, when you why? said France. Because okay. it just, Cause I'm, it, it, cause you're, I'm you're hitting France. the name. <laughs> I think you're psychic. I just felt, <laughs> really? Yeah. Okay, so this is the part that as... A psychic medium connecting with spirit about a topic or subject or part of history that I don't know about and I'm terrified. It's not I, a very I'm well terrified. known battle here. Okay, so I'm worried that I'm getting everything messed up and out of order no. and wrong and that's, you know, that's all the part mm. of being a medium is you have to allow yourself to risk being vulnerable. Yes. You have to take a risk of being wrong. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to take a risk and just say that I feel that they were promised a certain group, like not all, I don't feel like it was a large amount, but I think it probably would have been enough to tip the scales in their favor, to be honest. Okay. Like it could have been like maybe a thousand men or something. I don't know, but they were, they were promised support. Um, and, and the other thing that I'm hearing is that, <clears throat> that they were not a rich army, the okay. Irish and the Scottish. They didn't have the artillery that, um, the British soldiers had their guns. I, I see British soldiers like this. They've got their, wow. <laughs> got on my pan. Maybe I'm loading some muskets. <laughs> um, but, uh, <laughs> They've got their knee, like they've got their thing, and they have a musket on here, and they're like using something to pack in gunpowder mm -hmm. or something. I don't know, but it's like a musket. A gun kind of goes out and and bigger at the end. Mm -hmm. So um, I want to call it a musket. I could be completely wrong, but anyway, they you're have right. these I rifle could, type. I, I, of... I should just say that you're right. You're right. Okay, well you're then, on the right then I'm going to keep saying what because they're I'm showing so, me. You are so. The, what you don't see, guys, mostly because it's edited out, is Rhonda always says, don't tell me anything. So I'm almost yeah, like afraid don't. to well, say I, anything. Well, well oh, you can just give me a clue. Yes, she you're is headed right. right. She is okay, right. good. Yes. Okay, all right. It's like, oh! Um, uh, <laughs> what he's trying to get across to me is that this isn't just a battle to put the rightful king on the throne. It's also a battle that represents a risk of them losing their freedom. Their freedom. They're terrified that if they don't get the rightful king and fight for him to be on the throne, which is a noble fight, that they're risking their children and their children's children right to freedom, that they'll be overtaken and swallowed up by the throne of England, is really okay. what he's telling me. They're very eager They're to very eager to get me there. They want my feet on the soil. Okay. They want my feet on the soil. They said so there's, you don't feel there's something much sacred. really happened in this area. Oh, a lot happened in this area. There's planning. There's there's men camped around small fires at okay. night waiting, because like over here at this area, what they're showing me now is kind of the quiet before the storm. Okay. And right now, I'm feeling the camp outs and and actually. The energy here is, yeah, they're focused, they're determined, but they almost feel like they have victory in their hand. They really do feel like the winning of this is already in the stars. They feel like God is on their side okay. and um, the right will prevail. Good will so prevail. So how do you feel about going to the actual battle? I want to go because, um, because he, and then all the, I feel like I, it's so weird because I, I can hear them walking behind me. Really? Uh -huh, I can hear their, their footsteps. I, I must admit, I can feel someone around us. Oh, we are, right now, there's probably about 10 or 12 men all around me right now. Oh. And, um... That's not a new for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I need to get out more. <laughs> oh, God. All these men at war. It's not, you know, a man in uniform. Just saying. Oh, yeah, why not? Um... But like I can feel them and they're all walking with purpose and they're walking behind me and they're, they're, they're very eager for me to get my feet on the soil where the battle took place because they want, they know when I get there, I'm already feeling so much. Mm -hmm. They know that when I put my feet on there, it'll, it'll, all the components of what they're telling me, action will hit and okay. I'll be able to really tell you what's, what's going on. 
can I ask, um, I always ask this, what are you hearing? Like, not like from Oh, what spirit. I hear right now? Yeah, like... I hear fires crackling. Okay. I hear men singing some songs. Okay. I, um, I hear some... Not... Everybody's not rolling laughing, but I do hear laughter, laughter bursting yeah. out here yeah, and there. Of course, yeah. Um, there, the, 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 there's very good morale. Morale, yeah. The camp is filled with very good morale. Okay. Um, I, I feel a real brotherhood here. Like, the Scots primarily stay with the Scots. It's mostly Irish here. Um, I would say predominantly the men here are Irish, but there's mm. a very large amount of Scottish men here. And there is a brotherhood between them. So guys, we're making our way down to the battlefield. And um, I'm wondering, Rhonda, are you picking up anything in the village? Or is it still the same soldiers kind of waiting for us to get there? You know, the village was quiet. It was quiet. It was quiet. I suppose everybody went and everybody probably fled. Pretty much locked down. I feel like a lot of people got away. Mm -hmm. um, but some people couldn't really get away. Okay. And they just stayed quiet um, in their homes and prayed. So we made our way down to one of the main areas that the battle took place where the Memorial Cross stands and the remains of Ockram Castle. So far, I was blown away by the accuracy of Rhonda. It was just incredible. The details she was coming out with and the sheer brutality of this war was making itself all too clear. So there's a woman here? Yeah, there's a woman here and she, I, I was just looking at this water thinking, you know, how peaceful it is. And she said, well, she said, um, like I can actually smell awful smell. Okay. And, um, it just smells like, it smells like death. Okay. And, uh, she said that this water was, this water was running with the blood of dead men okay. long after the battle was over. Oh, wow. Yeah, and she said that they would, they even, she said we had nowhere else to wash our clothes. This oh. is the only place she said we had to wash our clothes. And her husband died in this battle. Okay. And um, her name was Margaret. She said that she still had to wash their clothes. Her, her children, um, the diapies, you know, the, the diapers, yeah. she's saying. And she said every time she smelled that smell in there, she's, and it's, it is a bit morbid, actually. Um, that gets awful. Blech. It's terrible. What's the smell like? Is it it's, like dead, uh, dead animals? Oh, yeah. No, worse than that. It's just almost a rancidy smell. It's only, it's not, it's, it, it is a very pungent awful mm. smell mm. um but it's 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 like that faint a whiff just kind of goes by and she's telling me that she would hold her baby named for her husband she'd hold her baby and he'd just be wearing the diaper and this was in like i want to say the beginning of fall okay um it wasn't really cold yet. It had begun to cool off. She said it was, mm. She said that that summer was, it's almost like God gave them the hottest summer possible for this battle to happen. Okay. And when the seasons began to change, she goes, uh, it was cooled off to where it was actually, it felt like spring again, kind of. Uh, but she says, but I didn't have my husband. I had my baby. I had me. She had two other children. And she'd wash the clothes, and she said that even in the house, she could smell the smell of death on her clothes. And she said, I had no other choice. She said that the water really didn't lose that smell until the end of spring the next year. Oh, it was awful. So I can tell you that it is said that the streams here and rivers and valleys, they ran red with blood. Oh yeah, she's showing me that you couldn't see through them. Like as I'm standing right here, and I'm looking through, I can see that rock, I can see the debris at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And she said, you wouldn't be able to see through the water, that it was, it was opaque. 
Oh my god. You, you couldn't see through it. And she and said would that there be different... body parts floating through it and not really from this angle. She said over there you would get further down. Up. Further yeah. down, yes. Um uh, but she did say that um that at one point it looked like a river of blood. So guys, the last time I was in Akram was about three, four years ago. And um I came here, of course, I didn't know Rhonda at the time. I was just beginning my channel. But I always wanted to come to Ockram Battlefield. And I came here and I did a spirit box session. And I have to say that Ockram was kind of the first place when I knew there was something on the other side. Because I went into this as a full kind of skeptic. I knew I had kind of feelings and senses. Like Rhonda says, I am quite... You're incredibly intuitive. Intuitive. Yeah, you are. See, she's good with the words. I'm not. And um, when I came here, I had the spirits calling my name. And I caught it on camera. I'll include a clip here. Do you know my name? Can you say my name? But it said, I was like, can you say my name? And I said, Curon. And it was like they were kind of having fun with me. I felt like a group of men around me. I wonder if O'Shaughnessy was there with he you. He probably was. And I wonder if I even caught that coming through on ghost spirit box. <gasps> but, um... <laughs> I Are remember we close it. Right but now? You, do you know how I pronounce my name? Yo, we? We're close. I was just over there, but I pronounce my name with the Ron at the end. I'm like, Curon. I keep saying because it's Irish and I'm proud of right. it. They were mocking me and going, Curon. <laughs> you know, they were really, and it was really right, they're deep, putting that scary voice. Emphasis on it. Yeah, and that's what really got me because that's something personally I do. You do. It wasn't just like a random Curon right. set. But um, I wonder if they remember me. Okay, so Rhonda, we are in, it's not the, it's one of the main battlefields, okay? So right in front of us there is the ruins of Ockram Castle, the O'Kelly oh. Castle. And then over here. So that's what's left of it. That's what's left of oh it. Oh my gosh. And over here is a memorial cross. And something very horrific happened at this memorial cross. And I want to bring you over and see what you pick up. I want you to come over to this railing. Would the British have had, um, because I know they're referred to as redcoats, but I really see redcoats. Probably, yeah. I um, say so, yeah. Oh. And it's a really, it's an awful feeling right now. Mm -hmm. It makes me feel physically, I'm repulsed. Okay. Um, because it's disgusting. It's like a horror movie. It, it is, but the arrogance and okay. the um, they're 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 so cocky and arrogant and proud of defeating a group of people, men who didn't even have a chance. A chance. It was like lambs to a to slaughter. It really, it really was. Even though they would take offense to that, you know, being referred in that way, because they said our passion, our right, gives us the strength of five men. Uh, yes. They felt that one of their men could easily defeat five of of the well, British the the and take on is, ten. Is fight. We we were the first country to fight against the British. Yes. So, it, but. Um, like earlier, O'Shaughnessy, and he's he's here now, and there's mm, this is covered, this is covered. Uh, but right here in this space, lots of things happened here. But the thing that I'm pulling up on isn't isn't being the Irish here or the Scottish here. Okay. This is to me, I I see um, English soldiers who basically claim this area and yeah. they're like they're just all over the place and are the press following us Rhonda? <laughs> you know, that paparazzi the, the, the paparazzi is such a bitch paparazzi i'm telling you i so just you're, i just can't get a break get, get away. she's can't been get recognized in ireland Have you ever see Rhonda on the streets go up and ask for a picture I do but um okay so i am seeing so much arrogance and they're like um proud of 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 defeating an army that was never going to be able to, to be as strong as them 
but I also in the beginning, even before we get to this point, I I felt that France was supposed to like I think that I think that the Scottish and the the Scottish and the Irish uh, had uh, asked for help from France, and yeah. I feel like they had maybe said, "Oh, we'll give you." you know, 2,500 men or something, or 1,000 to 2,500, something like that's what I'm feeling. And I think they got here too late, and too little, too late. Okay, that's what you keep hearing, isn't it? I do keep hearing that. And here's the thing that's so awful, is that these French soldiers, they, they wanted to help. They did not want to help, but they did know it was a losing battle. And the okay. ones that came, basically we're given a death sentence and that is what's happening here do you think the irish there's, there's a death happening right here okay okay um there is british are making a they're making an example of the french saying really you want to go against little armies against us like do you know who you're dealing with this is what happens to you. You can send this head back to France, back to your king. A head? And, yes. They're like, almost like how, um, you know, uh, the dance of Salome, um, okay. the beheading, they're like, this is a head. They're like, send it back and say, this is what happens. Like holding it by the hair, like holding the hair of the head and saying, this is what happens when you go against the, the crown of England. So you're saying... In this area, somebody lost their head, or was that somewhere it was else? A young, it was a man, a French man. Oh my military, God. A, mili a militia, French militia. In this area? Yeah, right here. Oh my God. But this would be after the war was over. This would be like the beginning. I would say this would probably be, I would say, at, after it was over and, and they, they knew that they had already won. So this, and they wanted to make a final, um, a final nail in the coffin, and that's what they did. Oh my God! It, it's and it's they made a joke of it. They, I see them with this head. I see uh, them throwing it around like it's kicking a joke. around like football. No, they're actually hitting oh, it. Oh my God! Okay, so that's the memorial cross, guys. Which it's wow. it's so horrible i mean as if there hadn't been enough bloodshed bloodshed in the massacre um like it's it's nothing but death it's just death everywhere is death dead bodies everywhere death defeat and death and it's like they're reveling in it i suppose war can turn the sanest man crazy really can't it yeah, I think I think some of them went already in a little bit insane when they joined on okay. that side. I think they had this this thirst and desire, almost sado sadomasochism, a little bit. This mm. desire to crush, humiliate, and drive further mm. down any hope that could possibly have been there. They wanted to destroy it because they did know that these men had lots of hope. They had lots of passion, but Smile. even with that. Um, they didn't, they didn't kill it. The hope, the hope still lived. Wow, what an incredible experience. To witness Rhonda's gift in such a famous haunted location here in Ireland. Some say it's Ireland's Gettysburg. It has left me curious, bewildered, and so excited for the next location if you could guys make sure to like and subscribe you can follow me on instagram facebook tiktok and twitter all linked down below as well as the links to all of Rhonda's social media until next time guys bye Sean and he is fucking sexy <laughs> Rhonda doesn't know i'm recording <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> um I'm getting hot and bothered over <laughs> she, a Scottish she's, ghost. She's flirting with a Scottish <laughs> ghost. I tell you, some of them are joking and saying, yeah, you're my brother, but I'd never let you wear, marry my daughter. Stop. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> my, my crayon's going out of control here, guys. <laughs>
just a second. It's Did you get it? Yeah, I just still heard you. Just still heard you. I, I turn my head for a second and she's off talking to a ghost in the corner.